Hi and welcome to Cafe Malou number three on a beautiful autumn day uh, with beautiful colored leaves all around here in Hamburg. Okay, Jun Kim, uh, I think you have been to many sorts of cities in the world because of your artistic performance. What do you think most impressive city or place in your life? And do you have any idea to move or stay in that city? Um, I love Paris and I love New York uh, overall. Although there are so many other beautiful cities, of course. Uh, I have been living in Paris in the late 80s for seven years already. So, yeah, why not moving to New York for a, another experience? Michelle René, have you ever written lyrics or a melody exclusively for another artist, one that you have never performed publicly? Uh, yes, long time ago in Switzerland I did that. Um, but I, then I stopped, didn't like it. So, um, until a German singer asked me lately to collaborate on a song um, where I wrote the music and he wrote the lyrics. And I really loved that song, though the record company didn't like it that much, so it didn't make it on the album, unfortunately. But it's a great song. Mariana Alvarez, the president. If you recall the time you knew you were meant to be who you are, singer, musician, composer, soul healer, can you tell me how you felt? The call to follow your destiny, so to speak. Well... The first time I was aware of the fact that uh, my dream came true um, was when I played with my trio Ping Pong on the big stage uh, at the Jazz Festival in Montreux. Um, this was in 1982, yeah. And I felt very proud, but also sad because my father died uh, just a year before and I couldn't share my luck with him, though, um, yeah. I played for him as well then. Then much later, thanks to uh, the internet and social networks, I got all these fantastic feedback uh, for my music and people were telling me um, what it means to them, what I was doing and, and, and how it was affecting them. So this was new to me and I so, uh, somehow felt very proud again. but also felt sort of a responsibility because uh, I found out that a lot of songs I have written uh, spoke to their hearts. Armando Meza. Kurt, in the beginning of your recording career when you were finally signed to a record label contract uh, and also when you were under Herb Albert's uh, A&M Records label, did those labels step back and say to you, Kurt and Felix, you guys are the artists. Whatever you bring to us in all its creative originality is welcomed. You have complete artistic freedom and... Or <laughs> were there times when a record label said, Kurt, um, we would like you to do this with our ideas in mind. Okay. Um, with Double and also later in my solo career, we all always uh, signed a, a so-called uh, licensing deal, which means we delivered the final production. So we were in total control, artistic control of what we, are, we were doing. And uh, there was one exception. Uh, when I lived in Paris, uh, I signed to Phonogram France and had a, an artist deal, but I would never do that again. And besides uh, A&M in the U.S., I mean, they bought the album Blue uh, when it was already a big hit uh, all over Europe, so there was no risk. And uh, for the second album, um, we, uh, we had complete artistic freedom, too, uh, because we had this bonus of the first hit record. And... Uh, but they were quite shocked when they heard uh, the violin on Devil's Ball in the end. They knew it would never get heavy airplay in the U.S. Uh, as a solo like that. So we were quite naive back then. But that's okay. 
many dogs around here. Um, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> uh, Diane Jones, I have enjoyed all the wonderful photos you have taken. Is photography a fun and interesting hobby for you? Also, you are skilled craftsmen. Love the chairs that you have restored. Do you still do this when time permits? I mean, I have no hobbies. <laughs> I think a hobby is something you do to escape a routine, and uh, I don't have any routine. So uh, when I take pictures, I do it like someone who is a professional photographer, although I'm not, and also not that good. But uh, I do it very seriously. And uh, with the chair, it needed someone who took care of that chair that I bought on a flea market. And uh, uh, yeah, I just restored it with the help of, of an upholsterer, so it wasn't only me that was doing that. But it won't be my uh, my second profession. <laughs> Lorna Pickerman. Well, guessing that Mr. Malou will not answer about breast or leg, here is one. How many instruments do you play and at what age did you start? Uh, Lorna, about the legs or the breast, uh, with the chicken, of course. I usually have them both because I'm very hungry. So, uh, And now your second question. I've been playing the guitar since I was 11. Yeah, I played a little piano. Uh, I still do, but I mean, not on stage. And I mean, it's, it's good enough for composing, but uh, I would never perform with it. And, and I also love to play the drums, but that's another story. And <laughs> of course, not in public. So we have, uh, what's next? Jonathan G. The smooth jazz musical style uh, has of course taken off tremendously, especially over the last decade. I think that without your musical and stylistic output back in the mid 80s, the scene would not at, be, not at all be uh, what it finds itself today. You seem to have been very before the times indeed. I'm wondering who were a few of your biggest musical influences. Mm, first thing that comes to my mind always is uh, Miles Davis. Records like In a Silent Way and Bitches Brew, they just, they just blew me away. And, uh, uh, yeah, sort of influenced me big time. Uh, I love the fire under the surface, under the cool surface that was burning there. And, um, I was also listening to like jazzy, smooth uh, uh, tunes uh, of people like Lou Donaldson, Ramsey Lewis, uh, who else? Wayne Shorter, the, the early Wayne Shorter. Uh, Ramsey Lewis has said that already. Uh, Isaac Hayes, of course, yeah. Never forget Isaac Hayes. Elysia Fields. What was your inspiration for Rangu Moon? Um, I wrote Rangu Moon. Uh, when I was riding the bike over a, a highway bridge in Zurich at night, having a big low red moon over the hill. And then I started to, to daydream or night dream, whatever, and uh, landed in Rangoon, Burma, which is now Myanmar. And um, imagine the pagodas with the red moon above that has the ability to shine into the heads of people and make them do things they would never do, uh, usually. So it, it's the big seducer, yeah. And uh, I'm a moon, moon person, I mean, uh, full moon was affecting me big time when I was young. Now it's getting better, but still. Um, I also wrote a song that was called uh, Food for the Moon, by the way, just to mention that. And last but not least, Victoria Winter. My question for this Friday's Cafe Malou is whether or not your children have musical talents like their father and do they like your musical style? <laughs> yeah, you better ask them. I don't know. Um, yeah, they're not embarrassed uh, with what I'm doing. and uh, They're both very much into music. Uh, my son, though, uh, he, he used to play the piano. 
but then it was too boring for him, as he said, and started to play the drums for quite a long time, and now um, he stopped playing an instrument. But, I mean, that doesn't mean anything. He's 18, so he could pick it up later again. Okay, that was it. And um, next Friday uh, will be something different, because our president, Mariana Alvarez, is in Mexico City right now preparing... Uh, a special edition just for our Hispanic fans. We're very curious uh, and looking forward to this. So, until next Friday. Bye.